YouTube, what the crap's going on? Heir of Carthage here, back on Total War Warhammer. I am using a mod that lets me pick my lord as any unit. Um, so we have four Empire Knights over here. I want them to charge into my Skeleton Spears. It doesn't look like they want to behave the way that I would prefer them to. They're going to try and outflank me. Um, so even though you can pick whatever you want as a lord, it doesn't mean the AI is going to cooperate. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, so someone tells me that this purple son of Zerus, or whatever this thing is, is that Zerus? Yeah, something like that. They say that it can be good against cavalry, um, and I wanted to try this, so just a standard cast is 12, an overcast is 17, it just gives it extended duration. These Empire Knights are engaged right here and should be pretty well stuck in place. Let's cast this and see what happens. Let's see what the cooldown time looks like, see what damage, if any, gets done. Okay, the Empire Knights took off, but that's okay. Hopefully it kind of follows them. Eh, it did some moderate damage there. The problem is, is it looks like its path is kind of, uh, unper like that one kind of went off in like a J shape like that. So, and then it has a 53 second cooldown. So, I mean, it looks kind of like it had potential to damage cavalry, but it kind of looks like you would need a blobbed up enemy for it to work well. Um, just because the way that it moves there. Uh, let's see if it's predictable in the way that it moves. Let's try it again. That one was kind of like a J shape from where I cast it. I guess it kind of went on a diagonal of sorts. It didn't seem like it moved a lot for a... Um, didn't look like it moved a whole lot for a uh, vortex spell. Let's just go ahead and fold my flanks in here so that the AI will be more inclined to not waste their time. So yeah, I mean, so far I'm not seeing anything with this spell that just, I mean, makes it look like it's crazy awesome to me. Um, oh, these guys are just going to come clean around me to keep my spellcaster away. The AI has gotten a lot more determined to flank in more recent um, Total War games, which is probably a good thing, to be honest. I'm going to try and wait till I feel like I have a good target. Let's try and get a bunch of these guys blobbed up over here. Yeah, this is looking good. I think this will be good. Alright, let's see how many Empire Knights it can hit. Uh, it See, it veered off the other way that time. So last time it kind of hooked into the left. That time it hooked out to the right. And it looks like, uh, again, it, I mean, it didn't do anything spectacular. So I don't know. This spell seems a little bit unpredictable to me. Um, it very well could do a lot of damage to cavalry because even when I kind of just get little grazing hits like that It seems like it can be damaging, but I the unpredictability of it in a one-minute cooldown ah, I mean they're really not striking me as something um, Particularly interesting right there. So we wanted to test some stuff one-on-one -on -one, mono e mono and kind of see what happens since I can do the uh, in a unit as the Lord. So this ought to make things quite fun. Um, I want to do, uh, I want to bring out some hammers. Oh, I guess I need to pick the one up here. So let's pick some hammers. And this is just a curiosity thing. Uh, let's go up against the Empire. And let's go up against a unit of great swords. Hammers versus great swords. Great swords are an anti-armor unit. Hammers are an anti-armor unit. So this ought to be a fun comparison. Why am I struggling so bad to see the great swords? Great swords, great sword. Right here. No, not quite. Right here in front of my face. All right, there we go. So great swords versus hammers. And apparently it wants to tell me about a flame cannon. <laughs> I really do like the flame cannons. I just I don't think they're going to get used a whole lot of multiplayer battles regardless. Let's see about how deep the enemy is in ranks. So they're pretty deep. Now, I only have 75 units to the 90 in the Great Swords, and I honestly think that for the Dwarfs, that makes a huge difference. Their units are consistently smaller size, and so I think Dwarf units, pound for pound, are pretty good. Um, the problem is, is that they just don't seem to have the numbers sometimes to ever carry the day, um, and they don't ever seem to be real cost-effective. Now, I mean, this is a damage-dealing unit. It's armored. Uh, it does armor-piercing damage. Let's just compare the stats. It's 44 attack. And um, if we take a look, it should... Weapon strength should split here. It's 40 armor piercing. And for the great swords, it's only 32 weapon strength. I, don't, I can't, won't be able to tell their armor piercing from in here. 
So, I mean, I mean, I see better weapon strength on the dwarves. Armor's at 95, leadership at 85, uh, melee attack at 44, defense at 28. 100 armor here, so slightly better armor. Um, leadership is better on the dwarves. Speed seems similar. Melee attack is lower for the great swords. Melee defense is a little bit higher. And charge bonus is a little bit higher. So you get less charge bonus, more melee damage, fewer units with the dwarves, and most likely more armor penetrating damage. Uh, less charge. This is the kind of fight that if dwarfs aren't meant for this, I don't really know what they're meant for. Or, uh, hammers. Let's just see how this goes. So there was the clash. Let's watch the numbers. Great Sword's definitely getting the better of that engagement thus far, but let's see what happens after it evens out from the charge. I Honestly, though, again, I think numbers play a pretty big role for other units as my uh, death embraces your lord. <laughs> My lord got killed on the charge. Kill so, I am getting a leadership penalty. That's unfortunate. It's starting to even out just a little bit more. The enemy lord died there too, so we'll both get the leadership penalty. Let's fast forward and see what happens. Looks like the hammers do better in prolonged melee, and the great swords do better on the charge. And it looks like the hammers are going to pick up a victory there. So the hammers do win. They do have a few dwarfs left. Um, that's eh, honestly that's good to see. Good to see that the hammers are capable of that in just a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Uh, they cost a lot more though, a lot more. So I mean that's definitely not a cost-effective engagement for the hammers, but um, they can do it. And that was part of the question. Now, out of curiosity, I wonder how iron drakes um, or iron breakers fare in the same position. <laughs> Let's try that. And I'm gonna stand still. Steel? <laughs> what, am I, what is this? Hillbilly Knight? I'm going to stand still and let the uh, Iron Breakers throw their blasting charges, or I'll try and use the blasting charges to disrupt the charge of the Great Swords and then charge, counter charge myself. So let's do that. I'm going to fast forward and let's just kind of see what the right decision is here. Like I said, if we can disrupt the Great Swords charge, I'll go ahead and counter charge. Uh, you can see the uh, the charge bonus is awful for the Iron Breakers, but they do have a charge defense against all. Actually, it's going to be smarter for me to just take the charge. So that's what we're going to do. Because their charge bonus is so mediocre, and they and the charge of the Great Swords is going to be negated. The charge bonus is going to be negated. My guys will get to do probably two volleys of satchel charges. It's like part of a third. Yeah, don't take a lot of damage on the charge. The great swords, on the other hand, have taken a lot. But let, now, if we just kind of compare the stats, only 30 weapon strength on my men and only 30 attack, uh, which is equivalent, or actually slightly more weapon strength for the um, great swords. And the great swords also have the armor penetrating capability. So let's take a look at the close-up fight just to get you all some some looks here. Iron breakers are extremely cool-looking units. And I love the blasting charges. And again, in campaign, Iron Breakers are a unit that I would rely on heavily. Um, it's just uh, in multiplayer where they can be tricky. And, and these tests hopefully give you all some advice for both multiplayer and campaign. Hopefully they can give you some ideas on how to use them in both realms. And both realms require certain thought processes and armies that are different from each other. And uh, there's definitely good, good reason to know both. And right now the Iron Breakers are really doing quite well. They're a defensive unit. And we'll just kind of see how that plays out. Right now, they're extreme armor, and um, they're even throwing blasting charges, but they're missing. I don't know why they're doing that, but I mean, it looks like the Iron Breakers could potentially stay in this fight, but as time lingers here, um, it's it's kind of hard to tell. Like, the Great Swords almost seem like they're catching up. Again, numbers are going to play in favor of the Great Swords. These guys are slightly surrounded by the Great Swords. We'll see though, the Great Swords are losing numbers pretty rapidly. The leadership is quite a bit better on the Iron Breakers. But these guys only had 75 dwarfs and there was 90 swordsmen. Looks like their general just died. It's a relatively close fight. Wow. So it's a close defeat. Really, both units kind of lost there. 
So that'll give you an idea. So when it comes to just like anti-infantry duty, it, it looks like hammerers would be better suited to that. The iron breakers are clearly meant to be more of a defense. Um, but I mean, still, I mean, I mean, well, they cost a lot. They cost a whole lot. So that's a horrible performance in terms of just going one-on-one -on -one with each other. But I mean, again, you saw that the iron breaker there is pretty resilient. It's going to last a while and potentially give you a way to use something else uh, in your army. So hopefully that was interesting. Definitely wanted to test that out. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to test also, which was, um, let's grab a runesmith and we're going to make him the, the, uh, the general. I'm going to give him all these extra buffs. Actually, no, I'm, I'm not going to put him the runesmith as a general. I want to bring Thorgrim Grudgebear. He's very expensive. I'm going to give him all this extra stuff that boosts melee attack. I'm going to also bring a runesmith, and I'm going to bring all the extra stuff for him. And my question is, can longbeards with great weapons, can these guys hold up to great swords if they're receiving the buffs from these two units? Now, here's the thing. Uh, the great sword, actually, let's, um, Let's just do one unit so that hopefully it's easier for us to get this right. Now, there is going to be a couple of things here that are going to be a little bit wacky. Actually, let's let's do multiple units because I'm worried that if I don't, uh, the, the power bar is going to be too much of a problem. So let's just try this. And there's an area of effect buff um, on these guys. So I want to see if you can take a cheaper unit like... Um, like the long beards and make them resistant to great swords. Now you'll notice these long beards do not have charge defense against all listed in their description. They're immune to psychology, they can hide, they can encourage, but they do not have a charge defense, which means that you're going to want to charge them. Uh, and these are the great weapon variety. The other ones could be different. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position the runesmith and Thorgrim right here in the center so that their area of effect will reach absolutely all of these units. And we're going to make sure that it is. And you can see that it is. All the effects right now are, are working. And we have 44 melee attack. Um, and then 33 weapon strength. And if we look at the weapon strength. Um, that's for Thorgrim. <laughs> we look at the weapon strength here. 26 is armor piercing. I need to go look at the great swords, by the way. Now this may not be a perfectly fair test. Because the general for the great swords is in there. And he very well could get killed. And it could affect the leadership. I just, I just want to get a feel for this. Is it anywhere near being, um, you know, appreciable in terms of, of being an equal match? Okay, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to issue attack orders. This probably won't go perfect because the AI is slightly staggered. And I'm just going to move these units forward a little so that they stay within the radius of effect. Okay. I don't want Thorgrim or the Runesmith to get into combat, so I'm going to stop them here. They should still be within the area of effect. All the charges appear to be clean. So, clean charge. I'm going to bring these guys up a little closer. Just, again, every, make sure every unit's under the influence. It is, so every unit is being buffed by a Runesmith and Thorgrim. Let's see how closely they can hang with great swords, Because the cost of a, um, the cost of a long beard with great weapon is quite a bit less. And they are actually putting up a pretty respectable fight here. Now, the challenge with this is that in a real t a real engagement, you, you run a the real possibility of having air units dropping in all over Thorgrim and your runesmith. But you can see that, you know, this is a pretty nice performance here by the Longbeards with great weapons. I did need to get the charge because they don't have that charge defense, so you do have to counter charge. I still don't know that my guys are going to win this engagement, but you're going to get a pretty solid performance out of them uh, versus what would normally be just an absolute throwdown victory um, for the uh, the great swords. So the great swords do still win, but you can see that it's essentially a trade. So if you had some quarrelers, if you had a unit of thunderers, they could do even just the littlest bit of damage, an artillery piece. The uh, the great the long beards with great weapons could potentially beat great swords if they're being buffed by Thorgrim and the Runesmith. Now, the other downside here is, yes, the Longbeards are cheaper, but Thorgrim is more expensive. But I kind of think by the cost saved, by not going with hammers and going with the Longbeards with great weapons, that this justifies the spend back here. Um, so that's one potential uh, 
you know, strategy that you could try. I, I'm not sitting here saying that it's definitely going to work. I'm just saying it's an option. Uh, because those buffs that you get from the Runesmith and from Thorgrim are significant um, in terms of making the Dwarves much more capable uh, on the offensive. There's a couple other things that I wanted to test um, post-patch. Let's, um, let's go Empire. I'm going to pick a unit of Great Swords, and I want to go up against a Green Skin Black Orc. So, the Black Orcs... Where is they at? Right here they are. So Black Orcs now cost um, quite a lot more than the Great Sword. They're about 150 gold more. I say about. They are exactly 150 gold more. Grab me a drink of water here. Okay. So Great Swords. I'll try and stack my guys about the same depth. So there's only 60 Black Orcs in a unit. And I have 90 Great Swords. Let's kind of compare some of the stats here. So we're at uh, 100 armor, 70 leadership, 30 and 30 for attack and defense, and then 32. So 110 armor, slightly better on the Black Orcs. Leadership's also at 70. Um, slightly better melee attack. Considerably worse melee defense, um, but considerably better weapon strength on the Black Orcs. Uh, this is an anti-infantry unit. This one does not say anti-infantry. Um, this one is a uh, armor piercing unit. This one also gets listed as armor piercing. Just go ahead and fast forward, get these two units engaged. I think I'm at roughly the same width as the Black Orcs. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Close enough. Charge bonus definitely goes to the Black Orcs by 10. So on the charge, we should see the Black Orcs do very well. Let's watch the charge, by the way. I really like the charges in Warhammer. They look pretty good. They look a lot better than they do in Rome 2 or Attila to me. I really like the uh, unit collision mechanics much better in this game and the way that the fighting plays out. There's considerably less blobbing, um, and the unit collisions just seem a little better. So here we go. The fight has begun. The Black Orcs certainly look a lot more menacing than the Great Swords with those giant axes. I can't say that I envy the Great Swords' position here. But it is a fight that is definitely swinging in favor of the Great Swords right now, handily. And that's even though my Lord is dead. Let's fast forward and see how this one turns out. But it looks like it's going to be a pretty handy victory for the Great Swords, but we'll see. The extra armor and everything of the Greenskins may come into play. Their leadership's suffering because their Lord just died too. Actually, it's looking good for the Greenskins now at the moment. Wow, actually very clean victory for the Black Orcs there. That's good. The Black Orcs cost quite a bit more. So Black Orcs definitely took that one home and did so pretty darn handily. Um, let's switch over then and let's have another fun test. So looks like the Black Orcs were able to own the Great Swords, which honestly Great Swords are one of the most cost-effective heavy infantry units in the game. Let's swing things over and let's pick the Warriors of Chaos. And I've heard lots of people talking about the merits of Chosen with great weapons and how fantastically powerful they are. 60 units, same on the Black Orcs. Let's take a look though at some of the uh, stats. So Chosen with great weapons. And then we got the Black Orcs. So 110 armor. Uh, again, 34, 22, 42, and then a 30 charge bonus. 120 armor, so it's better. Leadership is also slightly better. Definitely better melee attack, considerably better melee defense. Uh, weapon strength is also better with 34 armor piercing, and the charge bonus is only moderately less for the Chosen with great weapons. The price difference, though, is considerable. So you're, you get all that at the cost of 350 more gold. Um, so I would expect to see a pretty solid performance out of the Chosen with great weapons here. And the Chosen with great weapons should be the Chosen unit that is best suited to facing a unit of Black Orcs. I'm going to just stay in my current depth. Let's go ahead and fast forward, get these guys wheeled up. We'll definitely want to watch the charge on this one. Should be interesting. All right, it lists these guys as a high threat to my unit. I, I would think so. I don't see how the Black Orcs are going to win this. Should be a pretty clear victory for the Chosen with Great Weapons. Let's check these guys. They do look pretty darn menacing. Of course, the green skins look pretty menacing, too. Here it goes. <laughs> nice clash between the two units. So definitely two very large, very tanky units going to duke it out here. Let's just kind of see how it turns out. 
Ooh, yeah, the Chosen taking a clear advantage. I mean, just hacking the Black Orcs to bits. Wow. They are going to absolutely thrash the Black Orcs. This is not going to be anywhere close. And that's with the Lord dying in the Chosen. I mean, the Black Orcs just got absolutely flattened here. So that was an extremely cost-effective engagement for the Chosen. So a lot of people don't pick those guys. I can understand why, because you're going to have so few men in your army. Now, what is the danger of picking these guys? That performance there was really quite good. What's the danger of picking this unit? Cavalry charges are still going to hurt them. And then you're also going to have artillery, and you're also going to have armor-piercing missiles. All of those things are going to be very, very dangerous to a unit that costs 1,450 gold. If you can keep them safe from that, and you can get them in an infantry fight, I think they're going to do very, very well. Um, just one more test, just out of curiosity. Let's put them up against a Vampire Count uh, Graveguard. Um, Graveguard are a lot cheaper. Like, a whole lot cheaper. We would need Graveguard with great weapons, though. And here they are. So, 6210. I, yeah, I mean, I would actually, I mean, I don't even know if there's sense in testing this. Yeah, the Graveguard are not going to win that. They're going to get absolutely creamed by the uh, by the Chosen. So, yeah, we're not even going to worry about that. So, Chosen with great weapons, definitely just one-on-one one -on -one are going to be the better unit. Um, now, if the Graveguard was supported by a Necromancer, uh, that could obviously be a much different story. In fact, that would be a curiosity. Um... These guys cost so much less that it is feasible that you could expect to see a Necromancer supporting um, supporting one of these. So let's pick the Master Necromancer. And I'm going to leave all the spells on him. Um, let's go with... Uh, but just to use the Invocation of Nehek, for instance. Let's see whether or not the uh, Master Necromancer can boost this Graveguard through the uh, Chosen with Great Weapons. And then that would kind of show you some of the danger that you're going to face trying to use Chosen with Great Weapons. Now, I'm not saying that they're necessarily the best pick against the Vampires. I'm just kind of, I'm just having fun here. This is just, can I do it? Would this work? Can I make the Chosen beat, or uh, make the uh, Graveguard beat the Chosen with Great Weapons with the support of a, uh, a Lord? I mean, the th I mean, it's not unthinkable to me. I just want to see, can you? And, and if so, how well does it work? Because, again, the cost on these guys is going to leave your opponent a lot more options for the rest of his army than you're going to have with your um, with your Chaos Army because of the cost of all the uh, high-tier units. Now, in Campaign, man, a unit like Chosen is just going to absolutely smash faces. And it's it's going to be a unit you're going to want to get a hold of as, as quickly and as often as possible. So the Graveguard are getting hammered originally here. Let's go with the uh, Invocation and the Heck try and keep these guys alive and see if they can be competitive. I'm replenishing hit points. Yep. So we are replenishing the Graveguard and the Invocation to Hack is definitely helping the Graveguard hang, but the Chosen are still doing quite well. And it is going to be a considerable amount of time before I can cast another Invocation into Hack. So even with Invocation to Hack, the uh, Chosen are hanging right there. It's going to be 20 seconds until I can use something again. Yeah, and in 20 seconds is going to seem like an eternity with this going on. Yeah, it looks like the Chosen are going to be able to handle this. going. The Chosen are doing damage so quickly that the Invocation and the Hack can't really resurrect the um, the unit fast enough. So you can see the Chosen are just doing that much damage. That says something about this Chosen right here. I mean, it is it is the far superior to the Vampire unit. And when this Invocation and the Hack runs out, it's all over. So this is with the Replenishment. And um, with the Invocation in the Hack, it is nowhere close. The uh, Chosen are still going to carry this one home with just a little under half health remaining. So, I don't think there's any argument at this point that Chosen are definitely the best um, infantry in the game. So, definitely a victory. All right, so we'll concede defeat on that one. So now I have a couple other interesting... Uh, okay, what was it? Someone wanted me to test... Um, it was 
Oh man, I've been on here for a while already. Okay, I'll try not to drag this out too much longer. But someone wanted to see me test Cryptors uh, versus um, it was Chaos Spawn, I believe. So let's go Cryptors, and I'm pretty sure Chaos Spawn are gonna take this one home. But let's do Cryptors, and then we'll do the Chaos Spawn here. Where are you at, Spawn? Chaos Trolls, Chaos Spawn. There we go. So Cryptors, Chaos Spawn. Yeah, I think Chaos Spawn will win this. I mean, but you get the poison from the Cryptors. Um, we'll kind of compare the statistics on these two, but people were definitely wondering which one was better in a head-to-head -head brawl. How many spawn are in a unit? There's nine spawn in a unit, nine here. Their guys are actually spread out a little bit more than mine. I'll try and be equivalent. There we go. Let's go ahead and move forward. So these are armor piercing, poison attacks with regeneration, anti-infantry, damage dealer, and unbreakable. And of course, the these guys are going to be unbreakable too, the Cryptors will. So here we go. Cryptors, chaos spawn, head to head. Who's the biggest, baddest infantry, or a monstrous infantry of them all? Uh, probably Minotaurs. Uh, these Chaos Spawn really remind me of the Flood from Halo series. That's really what they look like to me. Chaos Spawn appear to be getting the, the better of this. And I don't see how that's going to turn around. They appear to be getting the better of it by a considerable portion. Let's fast forward. Yeah, and then the Crumbling kicks in. Chaos Spawn easily going to take that one home. They do cost more but not a lot more. And so that was a pretty substantial victory for the Chaos Spawn there. So yeah, Chaos Spawn definitely going to take that home. But hey, now now let's have some fun. So there's the Chaos Spawn. Let's go up against... Um, I would assume Chaos Spawn for um, the Beastmen are better than these ones because these ones don't have poison. And there's no forest penalty either. So I'm not going to test that because it looks like it's pretty clear. Let's test Minotaurs. Um... Just standard Minotaurs versus Chaos Spawn. Minotaurs cost quite a bit more. They're armor piercing. And of course don't have a forest penalty. Not that I intend to fight in the forest. But this will be another fun test. Here. Let's see who owns who amongst Monstrous Infantry. Now of course Monstrous Infantry doesn't usually get used in an anti-Monstrous Infantry role. This is just kind of a fun what if. What if they went head to head? Who would win that fight? So yeah, don't don't think that everything I'm simulating here is going to be like a definite battlefield encounter. Some of this is just for fun. I'm assuming that the uh, wow, the Minotaurs got their face thrown off the charge right there. Gorbo would not have been proud of that moment. But here's the Minotaurs back in here. Armor piercing's not really going to matter a whole lot because the uh, Chaos Spawn don't have any armor. Chaos Spawn are unbreakable, the Minotaurs are not. Chaos Spawn are actually pretty handily winning this right now. Let's just see what happens. A lot closer fight here than it was with the Cryptors, but it let's it's very yeah, Chaos Spawn win. Wow. So it looks like the Chaos Spawn would actually be a potentially viable counter to uh, Minotaurs. Uh, they're cost effective at the same token so and I don't think the Minotaurs of Great Weapons would be a better choice um, the shielded ones probably not either I don't know it gives them a little extra melee defense that is interesting see that be the case with uh, with Minotaurs um, there was a couple other things I wanted. Ooh, uh, well no I don't have time because I've spent enough time on here I've had 20 what else do you want to see me test what else are you interested in um, uh, tell me about magic you want to see me test tell me about um, Anything else you want to see that uh, that I throw in here, units, whatever. If you enjoyed this, uh, there is a Eric Carthage logo down at the bottom right hand. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more. And appreciate MSI having sponsored this build that helps me record these videos. I will see you all back soon.